Good evening, and a very warm welcome to our small gathering here, and to those of us, those of you joining online, welcome to St. John's Evensong Service of Word and Prayer, led by the musical talents of Emily and the Choral Scholars. Here at St. John's, we recognize that we live, work, and play on the traditional unceded and ancestral lands of the Lagwangan speaking peoples known today as the Songhees in the Esquimalt Nations. And we are on a journey, a journey alongside and in partnership with the Indigenous community of truth-telling, reconciliation, and with God's grace, healing. No matter who you are or where you are from, you are very welcome here. Thank you. 
The first lesson is taken from the book of Solomon's Songs, the Song of Solomon. <clears throat> I am a rose of Sharon and a lily of the valleys. As a lily among the brambles, so is my love among maidens. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among young men. With great delight, I sat in his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and in his tension toward me was love. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. Oh, that his left hand were under my head, and that his right hand embraced me. I adjourn you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the wild does. Do not stir up unawakened love until it is ready. Here ends the first lesson. is taken from the book of Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the second lesson. Thank you.
compassionate God, we pray this evening for the underserved and forgotten peoples of, and communities. We ask you, dear God, to be a presence of comfort When they feel despair, bring them your hope. When they are experiencing neglect, cherish them. When they feel unloved, let them know they are your beloved. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget. The homeless, the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body and spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of courage and perseverance, we pray for all those who are working for social justice and to dismantle systemic racism. Help us, God, to acknowledge our own history of oppression toward the indigenous communities and those on the margins. Give us the knowledge to know when we are excluding, persecuting, silencing, and being complicit. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land of Canada, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. God of life and abundance, we pray for farmers and for workers and the agricultural fields of this, your world. We pray that you provide abundant rain and sun where it is needed and bless us with perfect seasons that yield abundance for all. We pray to God that you will continue to provide us and the world with bountiful harvests in the coming years. Almighty God, we thank you for making the earth fruitful so that it might produce what is needed for life. Bless those who work in the fields. Give us seasonable weather and grant that we may all share the fruits of the earth, rejoicing in your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking towards heaven? One minute, Jesus was standing with and talking to the disciples. They could hear him, they could see him, and if they reached out, they could even touch him. The next minute, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. It's as if they were watching a gap open between him and them between the seen and the unseen, between their life as it was and as it is now. And how might this sight have impacted their faith? I don't know why the apostles stand looking up at heaven, but I can tell you about the times I've stood looking up. And I have a hunch it might be why the apostles did also. The times I've stood looking towards heaven were times when a gap was opening up in my life. When I feel the tension of a gap, I find myself looking upward. I feel pulled between this and that. Sometimes, the gap feels like an ever-widening chasm that I will never be able to bridge or cross. Other times it feels like an abyss, an abyss into which I am falling and I can't get out of. And sometimes that gap is about a longing and a desire for something new and something more. Still, at other times, that gap can be pain, loss, or heartbreak. Does any of this sound familiar? When might you have stood looking up at heaven? And what was going on? How were you feeling about your faith in those times? Confident? Shaken? There is no wrong answer. There is an awful lot to chew on and digest within our readings this evening, and a five-minute sermonette isn't going to do justice. The spiritual vitality within Scripture can sometimes overwhelm us. There are times, like this evening, when our texts are so laden with rich pickings that one risks getting a little spiritual indigestion. Interestingly, Scripture's remedy for spiritual indigestion is to meditate. To meditate on Scripture is to chew it over and over until our souls extract its nourishing truth. Meditating on scripture does something to our hearts. It does something to our souls, and in particular, our faith. Throughout our lives, our spiritual fitness and readiness are tested and stretched by God. Today is the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary a woman who personified faith, a life devoted to prayer, and the willingness to serve God. The assumption is God's crowning of God's work as Mary ends her earthly life and enters eternity. The feast turns our eyes in that direction, where we will follow when our earthly lives are complete. Baked right into our sanctification is a process of spiritual refinement and consolidation, and this experience is rarely effortless or stressless. 
and Mary knew this well. Relationship with God is a living, ongoing reality. It is not static. As we grow, so must it also mature. When spiritual growth is in the wind, old certainties may not appear so certain as before. But the Holy Spirit, in love, moves our spirits, nudging us, discomforting us, disquieting us, so that we may become dissatisfied with where we are at in our fellowship with God. Those emotions of dissatisfaction are holy opportunities to strengthen our faith and bridge the gaps. This time of growth can be barren, desolate, and dry wilderness. But these are intimations of potential breakthroughs in our intimacy with God because God loves us too much to allow us to experience spiritual atrophy. Mary's life bears witness to this incredible process of spiritual refinement and a faith that surely would have moved mountains. The feast days of the church are not just the commemoration of historical events. They do not look only to the past. They look to the present and to the future and give us an insight into our own relationship with God. On this Feast of the Assumption, we acknowledge that Mary is closer to us than ever before. Mary, the Queen of Peace. Amen. My friends and beloved, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.